Welcome to hour number two, live on this Monday morning of the morning after on Sports Grid and Sirius XM channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM. All across the Spiz Grizz Network, that's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. Plenty to get to in hour number two. We continue to recap the weekend that was in the NFL. 14 games on your Sunday slate. Injuries across the league, sadly, to start off this season. Where do teams go from here? That injury insight and analysis from the pro football doc himself, Dr. David Chow, up here next in just a couple of minutes. We'll preview Monday Night Football. Russell Wilson's return to Seattle, a Pacific Northwest homecoming for the Broncos tonight against the Seattle Seahawks. We'll get that prop perspective from FanDuel's Tom Vecchio and the odds advice from our advisor, our sportsbook conciliary, Dave Sherapan, who is tuned in. Let me tell you that much right now. He knows Scott Frost is no longer the head coach in Lincoln, Nebraska. He brings us all of the insight that we need later on here in hour number two. But it wasn't just football yesterday it was also a grand slam sunday at the 2022 u.s open to round out the tennis calendar of grand slams this year in history was made up in queens yesterday carlos alcaraz wins the men's championship at the 2022 u.s open a four set victory over casper rude and it's history for alcaraz as a teenage champion because after the win yesterday his first grand slam title as the champion at the u.s open carlos alcaraz becomes the youngest player in the history of men's tennis to be ranked number one in the world that is where carlos alcaraz is now he entered this tournament with the third best price to win the U.S. Open on the men's side at 8-1, to one, behind the reigning champion, Daniel Medvedev, and, of course, Rafael Nadal. But Carlos Alcaraz uh, put on an absolute display throughout his time in Flushing at Arthur Ashe Stadium and was booked as a heavy favorite yesterday to win outright against Rude. Minus 235, those pre-match odds. He wins in four sets, dazzles once again, all across the court and Carlos Alcaraz wins the 2022 U.S. Open now becoming the youngest player in the history of men's tennis to be ranked number one in the world so that was a grand slam Sunday and a victory for Carlos Alcaraz on the other side Iga Sviantek in the women's championship on Saturday afternoon makes quick work of Ange Jabeur she wins in straight sets in just two sets 6-2, 6-2, 7-6. Booked as a hefty favorite as well. Near $2, the closing number at minus 198. Anja was in the final of Wimbledon as well, but it's Iga Sviantek continuing her reign atop women's tennis. A Grand Slam victory to win the 2022 U.S. Open on the women's side. Booked as a relatively short favorite entering the tournament as we got ready in Queens before the 2022 U.S. Open began. And again, nearly a $2 favorite to win outright on Saturday, as she did. He goes, Fiontech in straight sets. So that does it for the Grand Slams in this tennis calendar. We'll get back underway in the new year in Australia at the 2023, yes, that would be at, Australian Open. A welcome to our Sports Grid Radio audience here. The second hour of the morning after live on this Monday, Sirius XM Channel 159. All of our terrestrial radio affiliates now in the mix as well. I am Ben Stevens. Plenty more football to come here in hour number two. Tons of recaps from the weekend, a preview of Monday night football, all of that from the NFL here in week number one. But it was a big weekend off the gridiron and on the court. As we detailed, the Grand Slam victories for Carlos Alcaraz yesterday on the men's side, Igor Sviantek on Saturday, the Women's Championship at the 2022 U.S. Open. It was also game number one of the WNBA Finals yesterday. And the favorites entering this postseason, the hefty favorites in game one and the series outright the Las Vegas Aces make good on that yesterday with an outright victory in a low scoring game, 67-64. The Aces get the victory over the Sun out in Vegas, but Las Vegas booked as a five and a half point favorite for game number one. It's Connecticut that gets the road 
cover. So as we move forward now in this series between the Aces and the Sun, a lot is expected of Las Vegas and very heavy favorites at this moment as we enter game number two in that series outright price. The Aces minus 650 to win the WNBA championship. That is a very hefty number at the moment on the FanDuel Sportsbook. You see there Las Vegas a five and a half point favorite for game number two. At least a little market buyback now working toward Connecticut's side. It's a four and a half point spread on this Monday morning. A total of 164 and a half. It was that Aces defense really leading the charge yesterday afternoon. Keeping that game 67-64. Well below the game one total and well below the total that we would see at 164 and a half for game number two tomorrow. As we look at the series correct score as well, it even is a stronger showing for the Aces. To pull off the sweep in three games of this best of five series, the shortest and most likely outcome right now on FanDuel at plus 160. For the Aces in four, that's plus 250. A four and a half point favorite is Vegas at home tomorrow night against Connecticut. The pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, joins the show up next here on The Morning app. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. So we wanted to test the football knowledge of New Yorkers by identifying NFL team logos. I can't. The Patriots. No. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This NFL team logo. Raiders. How'd you know? Because I can read. Hey, he can read. That's the, the Bulls, right? Close. Change one letter. The Rams. Who said you weren't good at it? That was great. I'm not been under pressure, but I'm a big football fan. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Bills 11 and a half, Colts 10 and a half, Ravens 10 and a half, Chiefs 10 and a half. The low team on the totem pole, Scotty, in the AFC, the Texans at four and a half. I think the Bills can win 14 games. What else matters? What do I care about all these teams that can't win five games? Uh, if you can't win five games, I'm not talking about you. How does that sound? And that's the way it's going. The Sports Grid Network. All that matters is getting first in these contests and uh, trying to not split that first place money with as many people as possible. So I've already had my, my brain working. Both across FanDuel, I'm going to have a lot of exposure. And if I'm not going to go with him in MVP, I'm not going to say I'm locking him in my flex plays, but it is going to be damn near close. I mean, I just think he's a fantastic play overall. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. The early line. I just feel like the Washington Commanders at a plus 152 price really are getting overlooked. I don't understand the hatred for Carson Wentz. And let's not forget in 2017, which isn't 10 years ago, he was the single best player in the entire National Football League. The team is talented, together. I know the defense might have been a little bit overhyped in the past, but it's still a solid overall bunch. You're not looking at the Washington Commanders and going, that team stinks on defense, they can't defend, because that's not the case. Only on Sports Grid.
Week number one, the National Football League regular season comes to a close tonight on a Monday night in Seattle between the Seahawks and the Broncos. But 14 games yesterday, so a lot to dive through on the Sunday slate of this NFL season. And some injury news to dissect and what it means moving forward the rest of the way here in this National Football League season. So join in the morning after. Live on this Monday right now, the return of the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow. Catch all of his work each and every week, not just across the grid, but on SixScore.com, S-I-C-Score.com for the best injury analysis you will find and what it means for your betting angles, sides, totals. And Doc, I know it was a big day for the player props yesterday as well. Yeah, injury-based player props. And so... We were lucky to go 6-0. and uh, You know, we had confidence in the bounce back from Saquon. He had 168 yards, easy over. Zeke's health, over. Tyreek Hill, Deontay Johnson hit their overs. And Godwin and Woods, under. And Godwin got re-injured. Yes, he did. He left that Sunday night football game early in the first half against the Dallas Cowboys. Doc, I was watching pro football today yesterday in your appearance with Kevin Walsh and Mike Blewett. You guys were discussing Michael Thomas, his return for the Saints. It got me to go look at his receiving yards prop. I bought in and he went over 46 and a half, 47 and a half, finishing with 57 yards. So that injury-based analysis certainly can pay dividends. But let's go to Sunday night football because the biggest story out of last night's game in Dallas the injury now to Dak Prescott, an injured right throwing thumb. He will have surgery today. The timetable, Doc, has already been set at six to eight weeks. So in your opinion, where does Dallas go from here? Well, I love it. Uh, Schefter, Todd Archer, Archer, they're copying us. We said minimum six weeks out the gate last night with the fracture and surgery. The surgery hasn't been confirmed yet. Here's why it's six, eight weeks. And here's why it's different than Drew Brees' thumb injury, ligament injury from a few years back. That was ligament. This is bone at the base of the thumb. Still can't grip. Not only do you have to have surgery in the bone to heal. Look, you have to have confidence to follow through on your throws. All the time, your hand and thumb, get, thumb gets hit by defenders. And you can't just short arm the thing. So six, eight weeks is a reasonable estimate. Honestly, lucky to return October 30th, but likely after the bye November 13th against the Packers. Where do they go from here? Cooper Rush. Yeah. I mean, you can't just, even if you could trade for Jimmy Garoppolo, you can't just add water and expect him to be okay. And that's not their only problem. They don't have Tyron Smith at left tackle. Jason Peters is trying to come back. Tyler Smith, you know, you know, he tried to fill in. Connor McGovern left guard out with a high ankle sprain. There's lots of problems with the uh, Cowboys right now. And they move back in the market, Doc, as you can see here. 10-1 to 1 in the preseason odds to win the NFC Championship. Now 26-1. to 1. So you said it would be on the positive side for Dak Prescott to return in late October. How detrimental is this to the rest of the season outlook for Dallas here already in 2022? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, he's their main guy. And, you know, look, maybe people like Cooper Rush, but that's quite a drop off. And even with that, they weren't looking that well during the game. Part largely due to the offensive line. And obviously, Michael Gallup is still a couple weeks away. They need some more offensive firepower power and their number one and most versatile versatile defensive back curse we're analyzing he left on crutches with his knee injury and we saw that movement in the nfc championship odds in a negative way for many teams not the buccaneers though the favorites only getting shorter now at plus 280 but dr chow you mentioned the injury to chris godwin leaving sunday night football early are you concerned for his role in this offense for tampa moving forward uh, there is some concern. Yes. Uh, and by the way, thanks for showing the score 19 to three. We were all over the under based on both offensive lines yeah. being injured. And that total was 51. So it wasn't even close. And uh, yeah. lots of field goals, uh, obviously, in that game. Chris Godwin, look, unbelievable, fantastic that he played. And uh, in our command center, one of the guys said, oh, there's a, finally a Chris Godwin prop up. And we're like, just Take the under, take the under. Yes, they fed him a, a wide receiver screen with 24 yards on the first play of the game, and he gained some yardage. But it seemed like they got a little over their skis and using him a little too much 
And then he got the mm. compensation hamstring issue. Look, once you have a setback like this, I don't see how he plays next week. He looked pretty good, but he wasn't 100%. And this is the dynamic game of football. And this is the risk in what can happen. And I don't see him playing next week against the Saints. And obviously their left tackle, Donovan Smith, left with a hyperextended elbow as well. So, And then, you know, you already have problems on the interior of the offensive line, Aaron Stinney, Ryan Jensen for Brady. That's part of the reason we thought it was an under lackluster uh, uh, offensive line up front with injury issues. All of those offensive pieces needed for Tom Brady at the tender age of 45 years old, now in his 23rd NFL season. Dr. Chow, you were following all of the NFL yesterday, and in that early window of games, chaos, certainly in Cincinnati, and what we saw in the overtime thriller between the Steelers and the Bengals. With the good, Pittsburgh wins outright as a a 7.5-point underdog, comes some bad. The reigning defensive player of the year, TJ Watt leaves early. The Steelers fear it's a torn pectoral. What's the update for TJ Watt? How did that look to you and what it means for the Steelers defense? Yeah, not only a top player in defense, TJ Watt, but Najee Harris left as, uh, as well, mm. their, their main running back. TJ Watt looks like a left pec tendon tear. Ironically, the same injury that his brother the previous Watt Defensive Player of the Year had. Uh, He returned after surgery for the playoffs, a little lackluster. TJ Watt will end up with surgery, in in our opinion, at Sports Injury Central, but his season is not over. He can make a return in December for Pittsburgh. What the Steelers have to worry about, hopefully they're in contention in December, but he can be back in December. Najee Harris was said to have a foot issue, for us, it looked like a high, high ankle. Remember in the prison, Coach Mike Tomlin said he's, his foot got stepped on, nothing. Turned into a list Frank. You can't get a list Frank by stepping on your foot. This looked like a mild high ankle sprain, so he may miss a little bit of time too. And the Steelers have their home opener this upcoming Sunday. They're booked as a slight one-point fa- or underdog right now at home, Dr. Chow, against the New England Patriots. The Pats only scored seven points yesterday on the road against the Dolphins. And there was some news after the game that Mac Jones had suffered a back injury. If you have a back injury, Doc, of any severity, playing the quarterback position, what does that mean for an already struggling New England offense? Look, the assumption based on video is the x-rays were negative. He has got stiff after he got a pa- uh, roughing the passer penalty. I think it's just stiffness and soreness. I think he will be okay. We didn't love the Patriots down in Miami. Look, Bill Belichick is the GOAT, but I don't think you can get acclimated to heat by just going down there and for five days. I think you just get more hot and tired over the five days, and it showed. New England was lackluster. So we have tons of storylines entering Monday Night Football today as well. Dr. Chow, Russell Wilson makes his return to Seattle already in the opener. From the field view approach, what lays out for Monday Night Football? Relatively even today, but running backs. Kenneth Walker's not going to play. Pete Carroll keeps hinting he might. There's no way. Obviously, they lost Chris Carson in the offseason, retired with injury. Rashad Penny's the only healthy one. That's the main one. But let's, before we sign off here, let's not forget the Packers. We were all week saying the Packers are in trouble, not just because of Alan Lazard, the book in tackles, and neither one started coming off their ACL. And Robert Tanyan was lackluster. And that's what you get when you have no blocking and young wide receivers. Green Bay yesterday, 23-7, to the defeat on the road in Minnesota. The pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, thank you, as always, for your insight here. Great to have you back on the morning app. We get the prop perspective for Monday Night Football from Tom Vecchio up next. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. 
Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. So we wanted to test the football knowledge of New Yorkers by identifying NFL team logos. I can't. The Patriots. No. Wait, 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 wait. This NFL team logo. Raiders. How'd you know? Because I can read. Hey, he can read. That's the, the Bulls, right? Close. Change one letter. The Rams. Who said you weren't good at it? That was great. I'm not good under pressure, but I am a big football fan. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Bills 11 and a half, Colts 10 and a half, Ravens 10 and a half, Chiefs 10 and a half. The low team on the totem pole, Scotty, in the AFC, the Texans at four and a half. I think the Bills can win 14 games. What else matters? What do I care about all these teams that can't win five games? Uh, if you can't win five games, I'm not talking about you. How does that sound? And that's the way it should The Sports Grid Network. All that matters is getting first in these contests and uh, trying to not split that first place money with as many people as possible. So I've already had my, my brain working. Both across FanDuel, I'm going to have a lot of exposure. And if I'm not going to go with him in MVP, I'm not going to say I'm locking him in my flex plays, but it is going to be damn near close. I mean, I just think he's a fantastic play overall. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. The early line. And I just feel like the Washington Commanders at a plus 152 price really are getting overlooked. I don't understand the hatred for Carson Wentz. And let's not forget in 2017, which is 10 years ago, he was the single best player in the entire National Football League. The team has talent together. I know the defense might have been a little bit overhyped in the past, but it's still a solid overall bunch. You're not looking at the Washington Commanders and going, that team stinks on defense, they can't defend, because that's not the case. Only on Sports Grid. Back right here on the morning after on Sports Grid live on this Monday. And the great thing about a Monday show now is not just the recap of the weekend in the NFL. It's also a preview of Monday night football. Week number one ends tonight up in the Pacific Northwest. The Denver Broncos with a quarterback by the name of Russell Wilson takes on the Seattle Seahawks. Yes, Russ against his former team, week number one of the NFL season. Funny how those schedule makers do things in the National Football League. So to provide that prop perspective for the game overall, FanDuel's Tom Vecchio joins us now here on TMA. Tom, before we look at Monday, how was your Sunday across the NFL? Uh, my Sunday was great. You know, ended up positive, was sweating a lot of close bets. Right. Uh, you know, didn't get there with uh, Keenan Allen, fell just a couple yards short dealing with a hamstring injury. Uh, but great start to the season overall, and I'm ready for some, I, I think, some really good bets for tonight's game. I like the way that we're looking at Monday Night Football already. Let's talk the game line overall and obviously the storylines that go into everything. The Broncos are nearly a touchdown favorite on the road laying six and a half the total is relatively small it's at 43 and a hook tom we've seen some movement on this number in the weeks leading up to the start of the regular season it got down to five and a half back up to six and a half and it's remained pretty steady there as you look at the numbers for tonight a six and a half point spread and over under at 43 and a half where does your eye go first uh, for the six and a half point spread, that might be a little bit much. You know, we've seen a lot of these offenses come out slow in week one, which is not anything shocking. You know, this happens uh, multiple years in a row. The over under, I would initially lean the under just because I think the offense on the Seattle side of things is so, so bad where 
you know, them winning uh, the Denver, that would be winning this game 27 to 10. I don't think is out of the realm of possibility. Uh, I would side with the under if I had to make a pick, but I'm staying away from the spread. I'm staying away from the, the over under. It's all about the player props for me as usual. And that's why we have the prop perspective on this Monday with Tom Vecchio. So, of course, let's start in the player prop perspective with one Russell Wilson. Russ against his former team, a Pacific Northwest homecoming, but his first game as a member of the Denver Broncos. Broncos country, let's ride. Tonight on a Monday in Seattle, 253 and a half is the passing yards prop for Russ. One and a half passing touchdowns, 14 and a half rushing yards for Russell Wilson. Tom, what is your expectation for Russell Wilson in his debut for the Denver Broncos this evening? I think he's going to come out firing. I think that this is a time that we're going to see Russ Cook. The, you know, Seattle will actually see Russ Cook. It's just going to be for the opposing team this time. <laughs> uh, they have plenty of weapons on offense, multiple different running backs they can use, plenty of receiving options. So I would lean towards the over one and a half touchdowns. It's minus 130. It may not be uh, you know, a favorable number for some people, but I still think there's a little bit of value there. Uh, the passing yards, I think, is right on the money. Again, we could see the under hit in this game. And so I don't think we're going to see a massive shootout because, you know, if we're seeing 300 plus yards from yeah. from Wilson, like what does that mean we're going to be seeing from Geno Smith? And that kind of goes against one of the player props I have. So I, I would have to take the under on that just because I want positive correlation. I don't want to be taking something that's negative correlated with one of my other bets. So positive correlation for Russell Wilson in terms of his favorite targets entering this season for Denver, Tom. And when you look around that wide receiver core for the Denver Broncos, frankly, there's a lot of optimism about what this offense is going to be able to do this year with with Russell Wilson. Where does that lead you to elsewhere on Denver's offense? That leads me directly to Cortland Sutton for any time touchdown that's sitting at plus 145. There have been a lot of reports coming out of Denver that Sutton is by far the favorite wide receiver target for Wilson. It's Sutton, and then there's a big gap, and then it's Jerry Judy, who I still think Judy's going to have a, a great year, but Cortland Sutton, if he's going to be the number one, he's the option I want at plus 145. Uh, his receiving prop is uh, for total receptions is only four and a half. Uh, I think that's sitting at minus 108. I, I love the over on that. And, you know, I understand that TD, TD props can be a highly variable. The example I'll use is yesterday right. I was on A.J. Brown for a touchdown dominating that game with 10 receptions 155 yards you just didn't see the end zone so if you're willing to go to a player on a touchdown prop and you or you, you don't want to go to a player on a touchdown prop look to his receiving props look to total yards you know longest reception whatever it might be there's ways around it if you don't want to go to something that's generally just a little more variable Tom, you are known as many things on this show live right here on the morning after. A jack of all trades, the home run prop king, and it leads into a question about anytime touchdown props because you're right. They are pretty variable. It's a random event, even if you have a huge game to find the end zone. So Cortland Sutton at plus 145, what is your handicapping style for anytime TD props? Well, once we get into the season, it'll come down to usage rate. It'll come down for a, a wide receiver, come down to target share, average depth of target, red zone targets, also end zone targets, not just red zone targets, but also end zone targets can be very specific. Uh, we want to you know, fold all these things together. It's not just one or the other. It's going to be you know, how involved is he uh, in the offense, how many touches per game, how many, if it's a running back, how many targets he gets. Et cetera, et cetera. And then also, uh, you know, folding in the matchup. Is it a great matchup? Which it is because the Seahawks have the 30th ranked uh, secondary, according to Pro Football Focus. So Sutton, who's supposed to be the number one receiving option at plus 145 with this reported great connection with Russ Wilson, sets up to be a great spot to start the year. On the other side, the starting quarterback tonight for the Seattle Seahawks, Geno Smith, filled in when Russ got injured a season ago. Tom, we saw it there, under of 30 and a half pass attempts what's the thought for Seattle's offense this season so for Geno Smith the under he was in those four games as you mentioned that he started last year he was under this mark in three of the four games and I think this has a lot to do with the potential game script I, I think Pete Carroll is reasonable enough as head coach he's not my favorite head coach but I think he's reasonable that he probably understands that this if this game turns into a shootout the Seahawks just can't keep up with Geno Smith at the helm at quarterback keeping up with Russ Wilson. And I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that we would see Geno Smith pulled in favor of Drew Locke. Like if he struggles, it's not going to be a shock to see him pulled in some game. 
So I think the Seahawks have to slow the game down and run the ball, as we know Pete Carroll likes to do. And that just generally leads right. to the under on Geno passing attempts, which is what I said, that taking the over on this game would have negative correlation with Geno, his passing attempts. So I'm staying away from the total and simply going to the player prop. So with that run-heavy game script, despite that idea of establishing the run for the Seahawks, and despite that Geno Smith is now the quarterback and not Russell Wilson, there's a lot of talent on the outside, those wide receivers in Seattle, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. But their receiving yards props are rather minimal tonight, 57.5 for DK, 49.5 for Tyler Lockett. Is this still an area, Tom, you'll be looking this year? How do you evaluate the talented wide receivers for the Seahawks this season? This might not be the game to do it. I think it might just be a stay away spot for me. Like I have Tyler Lockett on one of my fantasy teams, so I need him to have a big game. Uh, so I think maybe that just generally leads me to betting on DK Metcalf. So if it's not Tyler Lockett week, it happens to be a DK Metcalf week, and then I'll benefit there. But this is the kind of thing where I want to take a wait and see approach ultimately to see what type of usage they have, what are their A dots, which is average depth of target, because if they're just still going to be targeting Metcalf down the field, he's going to have this splash playability where he could get over that mark in two, make one, maybe two receptions. So I'm very hesitant when we have a bad quarterback, but you know, really good options on the outside. So between the Seahawks, between the Steelers, like these are teams I'm kind of taking a wait and see approach. So Tom, we call you the jack of all trades, not just handicapping Monday night football from that prop perspective, but also still on the Major League Baseball diamond. Yes, Major League Baseball continues on here in the final month of this regular season. And a ton of focus, Tom, is on that race for the top spot in the National League East. The Mets have a one-and-a-half game lead now over the Braves. Kenley Jansen gives up a walk-off homer yesterday against the Mariners. So the Mets, a a one-and-a-half game lead, Tom, at home today as a nearly $3 favorite against the Cubs. What's your approach right now as we near October with teams in the thick of divisional races? It's going to be the same thing I've said before. It's teams that are in these division races in a spot to bounce back. And I think that's the Braves tonight. As you said, they uh, blew the lead last night. They are now on a two-game losing streak. And now they are on the road to take on the San Francisco Giants, a team that's out of the uh, playoff picture. And they have, I'm going to say, the Braves have their ace on the mound tonight, and that would be Spencer Strider. So I'm going to the over on seven and a half strikeouts, saying a plus 102. He's been over this mark in three out of his last four starts. He's routinely going 100-plus pitches, and he's carrying – an insane 38.1% strikeout rate going up against the Giants. They have a 23.3% strikeout rate versus righties, which is the ninth worst in the league. So the Braves, a great team, have lost two in a row, now facing a team who's out of the playoff picture. They're in a spot to bounce back. And frankly, Strider needs to be out there. Their bullpen kind of got beat up over the past two days against the Mariners. So they're going to let him go for 100-plus pitches, and that puts him in a spot to rack up plenty of strikeouts, as we've seen him do time and time again. You could make that thought also as well. The Guardians at home tonight in Cleveland, a two and a half game lead in the American League Central. Cleveland tonight minus 120 at home against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Finally here, home run prop king. One of the storylines will follow throughout this regular season ending in Major League Baseball, Albert Pujols. 697 all-time in his career. He looks for 700. Tom, before we get done with this season, have you been looking at his home run prop numbers here in Major League Baseball? I haven't, but I, maybe I start. I need to start doing it because after the All-Star break, he's had, I think he has 12 home runs since yeah. the home run derby. He leads all the contestants who are in the All-Star break with 12 home runs. So, you know, he's got a, about a you know, a couple weeks left to get three more. I'm certainly rooting for him, so I might have to start going there in some favorable matchups. History on the line, maybe with some plus money. The cards, by the way, an eight-game lead now in the National League Central. Tom Vecchio, the prop perspective. How much fun was it talking Monday Night Football, huh? It's the best. I'll be here next week, as always. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. And that's why we appreciate you very much. More of the morning after, up next here on The Grid. The early line. I got the Denver Broncos winning the Super Bowl this year. 
Yes, it's year one for Russell Wilson in Denver. It was year one for Matthew Stafford in L.A. The offensive line is solid. It's not gangbusters, but it is solid. Let Russ cook. And the weapons are there to cook. What about the idea that whoever wins this division is going to need 12 wins, maybe 13 wins, which gives you a legitimate chance if you're high on one of these teams to maybe be the number one seed. on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Anyone who is drafting Jefferson over Cup, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I don't think I would do it. There's just so, it's like the McCaffrey thing. It's like there's just something in drafting the guy who just scored 400 points. Like you should probably just do that again. And then even even Chase as well. If Jamar Chase is one on one against the safety, he's coming down with that ball. He's knocking the safety to the ground, and he's scoring a touchdown. So for me, it's those three guys. The Sports Grid Network. A-Rod, Clemens, Pettit, Bonds, McGuire, Sosa. Get ready, because that soup is served ice cold. From a betting perspective for the 2022 NFL season, if I'm betting on the 49ers in the futures market, I want Jimmy G on this roster because that instantly becomes one of the best backups he's taken to the Niners to the Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. Are you looking for an edge for football betting this year? What if you could get insider knowledge from former team doctors about the injury mismatches every week? That's exactly what Sports Injury Central can give you. They're going to tell you what games to bet based on the hidden injury advantages. So their team of doctors will provide the data and their algorithm will tell you which games to bet. Against the spread, overs, unders, in-game bets, and prop bets. Sick Picks has it all. So take advantage of their 59% winning percentage over the last two seasons and sign up today. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a In half. game oh, live win. prime oh, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Monday shows on the morning after are so much more fun now because it's not just a review of the weekend. It's not just a recap of week number one of the NFL season. It's also looking forward to more football on your Monday night. Monday night football for the first time this year out in the Pacific Northwest between the Seattle Seahawks and the Denver Broncos. Of course, it is a welcome back home event for Russell Wilson against his former team in Seattle. But his new team, Denver, on the road, a six and a half point favorite with a relatively short total at 43 and a half. Last year, the Broncos had the second best scoring defense in all of the National Football League. The Seahawks are expected to struggle offensively this year with Geno Smith. As the quarterback, that's why the total is pretty small tonight at 43 in a hook. And when you have a team near a touchdown favorite with a small total, that means Denver is expected to do most of that scoring. So those are the game lines, right? The Broncos, a six and a half point road favorite, a total at 43 in a hook. But it's not just the game lines we care about for this first Monday night football game of the year. It's the storylines in Russell Wilson's return against Seattle. The head man remains the same, though, in this new era for the Seahawks football organization. Of course, that would be Pete Carroll. What does Pete think the reception will be for Russ tonight? He shares his thoughts. <laughs> you have to already tell me what I'm supposed to say here. Um, hey, you're either competing or you're not. I'm leaving up to 12s. And... Uh, 
you know, it's game time and, and we're going for it. And so however they take it, I'll follow their lead on that. I mean, I'm not going to be involved with that kind of opportunity to react, you know, so I'm, I'm not, I don't have to make that decision. I, I will see what happens, but I'm going to leave it up to 12. I think they'll know exactly what to do. Seahawk Nation, let's fly. Of course, you have Broncos country, let's ride. And what Russell Wilson is expected to do tonight. We flashed the game props earlier with Fan Vecchio. 253 in a hook, Russell Wilson's numbers from his passing yards prop perspective tonight. To throw over a, uh, to have multiple passing touchdowns tonight, over one and a half passing touchdowns, that's where the juice is at minus 130. And Russell Wilson perhaps showing off the legs, entering his 11th season in the National Football League, his first with Denver, 14 and a half rushing yards. So that's what Russell Wilson has, the idea of will Russ cook tonight? We shall see. There is tons of optimism for the offense for the Denver Broncos, but what about Russ's replacement for Seattle? Not nearly those positive feelings about the Seahawks offense entering the 2022 campaign. Geno Smith gets the start in week number one. He filled in for Russell Wilson when Russ injured his right throwing hand last year, making four starts, and Seattle covered in three of those four games. So what is that expectation for Geno Smith? Week number one of the season, here's Pete Carroll again. It's been eight years since he's been a starter to open a season. That's probably, it's very uncommon in the NFL if he's yeah. had the kind of gap. Just how have you seen him kind of handling this opportunity and maybe what are the conversations like? Um, and, you know, we've worked really hard to just keep one step at a time, keep going and, and keep your head down. And that's what he's done. You know, he's really just every step of the way he's been on it. He's presented himself in the best light. He's been there for everything. He's been on it. He's been consistent. You know, he, he could have had an extraordinary preseason. You know, if you go back, he had a lot of balls got dropped in, in his preseason and could have been 10 for 10, could have been 6 for 6 in the last one, you know, and, and I don't know, like 14 for 18 in the second game, you know. So he he was on it all the way throughout. And that's it. As we look at it, that's what we're, you know, evaluating. And So as we look at Geno Smith tonight and some of his props against the Denver Broncos, here's where his passing yards number currently stands, just 208 and a half it's nearly 50 yards less than that of Russ and we showed you multiple passing touchdowns is the expectation out of Russell Wilson tonight one and a half for the prop the over has the juice at minus 130 it's also one and a half for Geno Smith yet the under the heavy juice there at minus 220 that's where we look for Geno Smith at this moment and again when you think about Seattle, Geno Smith was in a quarterback competition this preseason, as you heard Pete Carroll mention, with Drew Locke, who was acquired in that blockbuster deal for Russell Wilson. And although we have a sample size on Drew Locke, and it was underwhelming at many times for the Denver Broncos, maybe there was some optimism that in a new setting, with a new team, Drew Locke could maybe live up to the hype of being a second-round selection for the Broncos a few years back. Instead, they tab Geno Smith, the week one starter, going with that consistency in their organization instead of maybe any shot of last promise for Drew Locke. And there still is talent for the Seahawks offensively, especially in that wide receiver room. If we talk about these guys last year, it's all optimism with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Now we feel slightly differently because they have a quarterback in Geno Smith throwing them the football 57 and a half is the receiving yards number for DK Metcalf 49 and a half for Tyler Lockett and it's a new era in Seattle we certainly know that no longer Russell Wilson at the helm Pete Carroll remains but the defense looks a ton different from those Super Bowl contending teams and you see even Super Bowl winning teams in fact of course under the Legion of Boom and you see that win total that stands right now for one final time entering this season at five and a half the over has the juice we've said this a few times on the morning after Seattle has gone over five and a half wins in 12 consecutive seasons in fact in eight of those 12 years Seattle has won double digit games but to win four five or six exact this year that's plus 500 that's the ballpark for where seattle is evaluated right now and here's the interesting thing when you see that divisional number for the seahawks at 17 to 1 right now in the nfc west 
The Seahawks are a six and a half point home underdog tonight against the Broncos, at least in terms of winning this game outright. Not much is expected out of Seattle. If the Seahawks lose, all four teams in the NFC West will have lost so far in the 2022 NFL regular season. The Rams on Thursday night. The Niners yesterday on the road in a monsoon in Chicago lose outright as a six and a half point favorite. How you would ever draft Trey Lance ahead of Justin Fields, that's a head scratcher that the Niners continue to need to answer. But they lost yesterday. The Cardinals don't cover as a five and a half point road favorite. And Seattle tonight, a six and a half point favorite home underdog the Cardinals a five and a half point home underdog as well there's also a chance that if Seattle loses by seven or more tonight that none of the four teams in the NFC West even cover a number week number one and three of the four booked as a home underdog so as we look at how tonight might play out let's set the game script Tom Vecchio mentioned it. It's a way that I feel similarly. Even with Russell Wilson as the quarterback in years past, one of the big gripes with Pete Carroll and the offensive system for Seattle was still trying to run the football too much and not letting Russell Wilson be at his best. Conservative game plans offensively and maybe establishing that run. But that should be maybe Seattle the way to at least covering the six and a half point spread tonight which would keep us under a low total at 43 and a half and keep us under some low numbers in the first half of tonight's game between the Seahawks and the Broncos the first half total is 23 and the under has a little bit of the juice Seattle's first half team total is just nine and a half Denver's is near two touchdowns but still under that number of 14 and it should be mentioned the Broncos last year a top 10 defense in the NFL the second best scoring defense in the league only giving up just a touch over 19 points per game a very different defensive scheme though Vic Fangio was the head coach all he does is defense now it's Nathaniel Hackett in his first time as an NFL head coach much more of an offensive mind an OC across the NFL and at my alma mater Syracuse University by the way Syracuse a perfect 2-0 this year both straight up and against the spread in college football but that's neither here nor there it's much more offensively focused for the Denver Broncos entering this season and because of that because of Russell Wilson because of the pieces he has at his disposal with his wide receivers and Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and certainly in that backfield as well with Javante Williams now entering year two and you have Melvin Melvin Gordon there as well there is tons of optimism but it all comes to a head tonight in the regular season opener on the road and it's the storylines again that carry the day Russell Wilson making his return to Seattle, a Pacific Northwest homecoming. How does Russ think it will go tonight? Let's hear, because Broncos country, let's ride. Well, you're, you're going back to Seattle. Are you, do you sense you're going back as a villain? Do you sense, how do you see yourself going back there? Do you anticipate you're going to be booed? What do you, what do you, what do you, uh, you know, I, I think first of all, um, you know, my experience in Seattle was uh, one of a kind, you know, 10, 10 years, I, I couldn't imagine those, you know, those years not being in my life and how special they were and how many games we won and how many amazing thrillers and just, uh, you know, Super Bowl we won and everything else. So uh, I'm going to think about all those memories and everything else and the joy of that and the gratitude of that. And then also uh, we've got a football game to play, so I'm excited to just get out there and play again. I, you know, I love this game. Um, you know, I'm passionate about it and i uh, got a lot of great teammates. There's a lot of guys that I'm super close with on the other side, so it'll be a great battle. Mr. Unlimited with a big contract extension just about a week and a half ago to remain in Denver for the foreseeable future for a ton of guaranteed money. I believe the figure was around a $135 million price tag in terms of that guaranteed portion of his deal. So optimism not only for Denver this season, but potentially the rest of the way. We know how competitive the AFC West is going to be. The Chiefs reminded us they are still the top dogs until proven otherwise yesterday on the road in Arizona. But the Chargers get the better of their divisional debut against the Raiders, and the Broncos are expected to be there as well. A win total for the Broncos this year at 9.5. Their odds moving slightly back in the division. Now the third best price at plus 270 but that's not the total evaluation for Denver again that win total is at nine and a half 
The over has the juice at minus 135. Their odds to win the AFC, still a top five number at 10 to 1. And to make the playoffs is almost a guarantee based on that price. Entering yesterday, minus 146. Entering this season, the sixth best odds to get in to the AFC playoffs. I think because of what we saw with some of those wild card contending teams, at least as the odds indicate yesterday in week number one, those odds probably for the Broncos going to look a lot better come tomorrow if Denver gets the win on the road tonight in Seattle. Again, the Broncos, a six and a half point road favorite against the Seahawks tonight. The over understands at 43 and a half. We have seen line movement in this spread always being in favor of the Broncos, but coming down slightly within the last two weeks to five and a half. Now it's back up to six in a hook. As often happens with primetime games and those standalone events, as we get ready for tonight on a Monday night out in the Pacific Northwest, we should see some line movement. Where will it end? Will there be more buyers of the Broncos pushing that line to seven? Might we see the total continue to drop as we did last night on a Sunday night? Only five games yesterday going over, by the way, in your week one slate. We'll round it out with our best bet for Monday night football up next here on the morning after live on Sports Grid. Stay with us. Pharrell, coast to coast. Green Bay's got bigger issues than that. Not only do they have young wide receivers, their number one Alan Lazard out, Tanyan coming back from an ACL, their tight end is not near 100%. And the book in tackles, David Bakhtiari, this is almost two years, he's barely played. Elton Jenkins coming back from the ACL. They've both been limited in practice. And even if they play, you know, their scores are lower there on offense. And so it's not just Lazard. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. A majority of minor leaguers have backed the MLBPA to join the union. The Players Association has now formally asked Major League Baseball for voluntary recognition. A lot of people said that this was too big for the union. The union wanted to deal with major leaguers, not minor leaguers. That's not the case. This voluntary recognition is a big deal. And Major League Baseball will continue then to have more of an integrated system. The Sports Grid Network. football giants in the late rain down in Tennessee. Does anybody think this game is going to be a shootout? 35-34, raise your hands. Absolutely not. Come home, back home to the birds. But again, the thing is, I know we have to add these stupid caveats of we're Eagles fans, but you out there know how talented this football team is. It absolutely could be their season. The early line, only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Sports professor Rick Haro into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Crypto. Crypto.com. Remember, they spent a $750 million deal for the replacement of Staples Center naming rights. We talked to Lee Seidman, the guy that drives the management of that arena. He talked about that deal, but yet they spent a significant amount of money with a Matt Damon Fortune Favors the Brave campaign. But guess what? They pulled back from a sponsorship at the last minute with UEFA that was going to be about $500 million, about $100 million a year for a five-year deal. They were in talks to replace Gazprom, a Russian-based energy company, did not. UEFA doesn't worry. They have a number of companies, Lays, Heineken, otherwise. But it calls into question the whole expenditure of crypto companies and crypto market. Everybody says they're fine, but we've got to wait. Sports Professor Ricardo, Sports News Minute.
closing out our two hours together here live on this Monday on the morning after on Sports Grid, Sirius XM, channel 159, all across the Sports Grid network as well. I am Ben Stevens. Thank you for joining us. Week number one of the National Football League regular season ends tonight up in the Pacific Northwest in Seattle. The Seahawks, a six and a half point home underdog against their former quarterback with his new team, the Denver Broncos, a total at 43 and a half. Not a ton is expected based on those odds from this Seahawks offense this year. Establishing the run is what Pete Carroll and the Hawks are going to look to do, I would think, early and often with Geno Smith as the starting quarterback as they look to replace Russell Wilson. So before we say farewell and before we say goodbye, it's time for a Monday night football best bet Focusing on the ground game, it's time for Bye Bye Bye. Listen, I might be off. They might be airing it out tonight with Geno Smith looking for DK Metcalf and streak routes down the field. But I expect the game script to be a little bit more conservative. I expect it to be run heavy for Seattle trying to keep this game ugly, trying to keep this game under that total of 43 and a half and within the margin of the six and a half point spread, which leads us to Rashad Penny, the leading running back for Seattle entering this season. It might be a backfield later on in the year where Kenneth Walker III, the rookie out of Michigan State, gets involved in that game plan for Seattle. But right now, he's going to miss tonight, most likely. Of course, Chris Carson retiring this offseason. So Rashad Penny leads the way. His rushing attempts prop tonight is 15 and a half. In four of the final five games last year for Seattle, Rashad Penny went over this number of 15 and a half. In the final two games, he had 25 carries and then 23 in the finale against Arizona. Every time he went over, by the way, he also exceeded the century mark as well. So that does it for us today on a Monday on the morning after. We're back tomorrow on a Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. We'll talk next.